I am going to talk a little bit about my experience uh, about being sort of a um, staff citizen or a senior um, engineer um, at Twitter and how my job changed. So a little bit about me, I, you know, in a previous life, I, I had a PhD in math uh, after some soul searching or life crisis as some other people might call it, I did what many people in that situation would do, which is go to uh, find a software, software job. Um, after a few years, I moved to San Francisco to do data science for conversion and ad company. And in the past uh, five and a half years or five and a half years ago, I have been um, at Twitter where I co-founded the machine learning ethics, transparency and accountability team. And I operated as a capacity of, um, of tech lead for a research lead for the team. And sort of like this, this talk really um, came um, I started thinking more about leadership for ICs um, during during my time at Twitter. And so maybe if there is one thing that I I want you to remember in the spirit of this conference is this meme. Um, so well, it's a little bit more nuanced than this, but um, you know when people talk about a manager in an IC uh, sort of career, they are very presented usually very. Uh, separately, however, my what I I'm hoping to convince you of, uh, is that they're actually not as as different as uh, people claim them to be. So maybe let's let let me start with some disclaimers. Um, this is not a talk uh, about what being a staff plus um, I see mean. There has been books and blogs and many other resources being about that. So this is not about that. This is also not a talk to convince you to be an IC or not to be an IC, or if you should be a manager or you know, it should not be a manager. I, mean, I don't have anything against manager. Manager are awesome. Having a great managers, uh, a great manager really helps. Of course, there are um, not everyone is a great manager, but that's true for everyone. And so uh, you know, I have talked. About, I would use these words like I see is geriatric I see like what what does the word mean so let, let maybe let's start maybe by defining them so I see is short for individual contributor is someone who in uh, usually in tech companies is a person who might shift code or do analysis um, roughly speaking we can think as someone who consumes your stories for the purpose purpose of this talk we'll consider geriatric I see or senior citizen, someone who is equal or above, of course, that depends on the role um, and the company um, senior level. And, you know, sometimes these roles are called staff or principal and um, senior level in most companies consider sort of like to be the final level, meaning that if you, uh, if you want, you can stay at that level um, without sort of getting flagged for performance, um, lack of performance. Um, a manager, as we might know, um, but I just want to make it clear, uh, is someone who manages people, has like literally direct reports, um, and so is usually is responsible for the team. Of course, it's not always like, um, it, there is a lot of gray areas in, in between the two. Some companies also allow what is usually called tech lead manager, uh, but for the sake of this talk and for simplicity, we are going to ignore this for now. And so what is the ladder? The ladder is usually um, the, the process that, um, uh, you know, is um, in companies to, to get promoted. And so as I was mentioning earlier, um, earlier in my introduction, like my, my time really um, at Twitter made me think a little bit more about all this um, leadership and like how, like sort of like a career uh, for IC is not a different for manager in the sense that, so I was promoted to, to staff um, a couple of years ago. My job really changed drastically. However, I did not receive any proper or specific um, uh, training for that. And so what, what really, what happened to me, it was, you know, I was trying to do my work and then someone would say like, oh, we should, you should join this planning meeting. Or, you know, I was added to a bunch of other meetings and at the same time, I was still being asked to, 
to keep contributing, to keep being INC, like to ship my own code, to ship my own analysis. And at first I was very confused and annoyed and it will like begrudgingly join all these meetings. In fact, here's a picture of me um, in those meetings. Um, and, and again, like not really understanding why I was being asked to do too many jobs at the same time. Over time, I realized that I was juggling multiple things and maybe that is um, what the job is all about. And so I was not, on, not only doing IC work for myself. So like, again, pushing code in my case, doing analysis. Um, I was also mentoring junior people from my team you know, meaning help helping them with the day-to-day -day, um, sort of jobs and um, should we do X or Y? Uh, how do we interpret this analysis? How do we frame this problem? Uh, a lot of that. And also people from other teams, maybe more on a monthly basis um, or so. But I was also involved in a lot of this sort of like planning, team strategy, high-level meetings, a lot of talking. Uh, that it was not expecting at first. And, you know, oftentimes when uh, the discussion of like, should you be, be a manager? Should you stay as an IC? They come out. I feel there is a lot of themes um, that uh, keep coming back and uh, that I might disagree with. Uh, so, for example, I, I hear a lot, you know, I want to remain on the IC ladder because I, I don't like meetings. Or, you know, I, I don't like talking to people. I, I spend my day writing code. Um, I do think that the technical, the, the, the hardest part of any project is the technical part. So I think all of those are sort of like things that I've seen and heard multiple times uh, in, um, in conversation when people were sort of deciding to be, um, maybe to switch to management. However, my friend Nick said that the best, uh, in the best way possible, which is any simplicity advanced engineer is indistinguishable from management. And so this um, is a little bit of an exaggeration, but is um, what um, the entire sort of like idea behind this talk is. So let's talk for a moment about ladders, tech ladders, or how do you get promoted in, in a big company? So here's an example of what uh, you know a data science ladder, for example, could look like um, in in your company. So you know you have a couple of entry levels, then you might get to like senior uh, senior level, and then there is a bunch of other things after senior. Again, they might be called staff, they might be called something else. Um, there might be um, you know here is a seven step ladder. It might be a different number um, of levels in your um, in your company, but it doesn't matter. The point being, um, there is usually sort of like that level, which in here we identify between sort of like senior and staff where uh, the job really changes. And that's where we call it geriatric as we, as we defined earlier. Sometimes, you know, some people might decide that they want to actually do management. And um, usually that happens uh, not before someone reaches sort of like the senior level of IC, and they say, I would like to be a manager. And the company says like, great, let me train you. Let me give you some training for that. Um, and they would receive manager training and you know, be a manager. On top of that, the more they, um, they go up their ladder, they will have even more training. Sometimes fancy school will do adult programs for director plus or VP level. And of course, I, this is absolutely not a complaint about manager receiving training. I do think, and I do hope people, uh, you know, companies will um, keep training manager. They are very important. Um, however, my question is, what happens? What do we get as ICs when we grow? When we go up uh, on our ladder, we don't really get anything. Um, and so the. Um, the point here in a maybe more visual way is that the two ladders are not really parallel as people tend to, um, as people like to think, but they actually tend to collide. And, you know, um, I know what you're asking now, like, did I do this terrible slide myself? Yes, thank you. Um, as you may know, graphic design is indeed my passion. 
And so, you know, this is, I, it is something that I have seen many people struggle um, in, like at, at that level, when they not tend to be aware of sort of like the leadership part. Sometimes people tend to think that in order for them to, to grow to the ladder, to be promoted to all the levels, they just have to be sort of like more hardcore, whatever that means. However, this is not enough. In fact, this is probably not the most important part. So let's talk about skill sets. What better way than talking about skill set than Venn diagram? In fact, you know, um, like Kamala, I do a lot of Venn diagrams as well. As I said before, usually skill set are presented very in, in a very complementary ways. <clears throat> so you know. You have manager skills, and then you have sort of like geodic or IC skills, and you know they don't really touch. Um, some example that you know we heard a lot is like, oh, you're good at talking with people. You should consider being a manager or maybe a PM. Um, however, I think again, as I mentioned earlier, I think this is a lie because after a certain threshold, and again, that's where the geodic part comes in they really overlap a lot. And so I do think that the real picture is not to, um, it, it's not to non-overlapping Venn diagram, but is, is something like closer to, to this. And of course there are some skills that are, you know, IC only or manager only. Um, so for example, you know, as an IC, you're, you're, you're indeed expected to, you know, publish your own code, being opinionated about, uh, any kind of technical decision, um, write technical design docs and whatnot. As a manager, of course, you're you're you know supposed to do a salary conversation with your reports. You're supposed to honestly have a lot of awkward conversation, um, do a bunch of admin stuff and whatnot. However, my point here is that the stuff that really matters is not that the stuff that it's on the border but it's that that's in the middle. And that's what uh, I see mostly tend to lack um, because we lack training. And so let's call this uh, the make shit happen uh, skills. And so if we look at this, at this like area of overlap, we see there is a lot of things that are uh, classically not associated with IC work, right? Um, so there is mentoring, for example, as I mentioned earlier, like literally checking with uh, more junior people on an almost daily basis if needed, if they're blocked, if they need help. Um, a lot of meetings. Some of these meetings might be about planning. Some other meetings might be, um, you know, with other teams. Um, indirect impact. So like, how do we make stuff happen that I cannot do it myself? because of lack of time and, you know, a big project honestly required a lot of people. Um, and so I, a single person cannot and should not, this is actually an anti-pattern, I think, if a single person um, does everything by, by themselves. And so what is that, you know, what does it convincing people to do stuff mean? Well, maybe it's, you know, you have an idea and you want to get headcount for that. Um, in fact, our political amplification work started exactly that way with like a simple idea uh, having a prototype and then trying to get um, a larger team to work on that maybe it's getting technical consensus for a critical decision or maybe it's helping you know unblock someone on my team um, to work with, with some other team maybe there's an issue there um, and they're not understanding each other is there is there something we can do there or maybe you know it was to um, convince other teams that we should work together on on a on a single issue. And so honestly, this um, you know in my in my work, this came out a lot because my team did not uh, own any of the models. And so if you really wanted to have any kind of an impact in the product, we had to convince other people who own the model themselves uh, to. Uh, to make the changes. So that's where the indirect impact comes from. And so um, 
this is sort of um, again. This is I, the, the, this middle area is like the area that um, uh, mostly it, talk, talking to people is the, the part that is most involved here, right? And not doing not doing code yourself, but make, making sure that other people are enabled to do uh, to do the work. Um, in fact, I would even argue that the technical work is the easy part. The people work is the hard part. Uh, sometimes teams have conflicting priorities. How do you convince them that they should listen to you instead of maybe um, their own priorities? Um, I do think that this is, you know, um, like as I mentioned, like the people work is, um, is really the, the hard part here. And so what, what's the difference really, um, you know, what do manager do maybe that we don't as I see it? Um, you know, capitalism like the military requ requires a very strong hierarchical structure where there can on only be one person formally in charge. And in companies, this is usually the manager. Um, and so usually they have internal responsibility for the team. And this goes both ways, right? If something goes wrong, they are the first one getting yelled. Um, and of course, they will be able, they will then try to figure out um, what was wrong in the team. Um, at the same time, if, you know, everything is great, the, the manager will be the one sort of like representing the team for the praises. And of course, great manager will be able to elevate their reports as well. Um, I mentioned that early, but I want to see, uh, say that again, like part of a manager job is also to have a bunch of awkward conversation. Um, not everyone likes it. And finally, you know, if, um, if you really want to sort of like be a, a C-level person in a company, eventually, um, uh, if you eventually want to be a C-level person in a company, most often all um, the path involves uh, the manager chain. And so when I was thinking about this talk, I was like, well, you know, what is that I've learned um, in my last, you know, few years uh, in my career that really helped me? What is like the, the sort of like a, a really important um, thing I learned? And I don't think it's anything related to a specific technology, um, a specific library or a specific whatever. Um, but it's really like the social skills that I learned just by, by doing this work. Um, and so, you know, the real transferable skills are the friends or the social skills we made along the way. And so to conclude and recap, um, I, I, I want to say that, you know, manager usually get leadership training when they start being uh, managers. Um, however, I see don't even after um, uh, they sort of like pass a threshold uh, that we will we call ger um, geriatric. Um, their work is very similar to management. So why don't we get the same training? I think as an industry, we should be more um, aware of that. And, um, you know, especially because this is uh, holding many folks back because they no one told people that uh, that is something that's really important. Um, and so if that, it resonates with you, and if you're interested, um, I've left some ways of keeping in touch.